Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. And we are here for your K State recruiting update. Typically it comes later in the week, but as Drew was just talking, he's thankful that the dead period has arrived. So there is no more visits that will be coming. That is all out of the way. K State has gotten their official visits done. They are going to be in, you know, now just hope that you secure the commitment of guys that you had on campus. They've already done it with some. Others have chosen to go elsewhere. Uh, so I guess before we go into the ins and outs of this past weekend, the specific weekend that we just had go by, overall, what do you make of K-State's efforts during the official visit period uh, in this 2024 summer, but really the 2025 uh, recruiting class? Overall, I would say that it was still a pretty successful uh, batch of official visits and kind of how things have shaken out. You probably can't say that it's an A-plus because you had lost out on Leo Almanza and Lucas Algeyer and Sirius Sinyard. So I think that with those, you kind of don't say that's an A-plus, but they can still salvage and make probably an A-minus, B-plus uh, type summer if they can close the rest of the month of June slash early July, kind of like what we've talked about with landing guys like Lincoln Cure, Brock Heath, Keaton Jones, and like Monterey Elston. So I, there's they're right there to have like a really good, probably like A minus type of summer, which I think is kind of what you need to do because that's just how recruiting rolls right now, where if you don't have probably most of your class by the end of uh, the end of the summer, you're probably kind of a little bit behind. So I think they're right on schedule. And from all accounts, all the official visits have been really good. And it's just been kind of like a, a whirlwind month of June. I, I say, thank God that it's the dead period because it just feels like every like 30 minutes, it felt like I was playing from behind. So I can't imagine how the coaching staff feels. And I think that the coaching staff is also probably pretty excited that there's a little bit of time off now up, up until that last week of July where uh, the contact period opens back up. So with the, the dead period being underway now, just so people are aware, what, what does this process look like? Cause we, I mean, everybody's probably going to be on pins and needles until Lincoln cure makes his announcement. Like these guys can still announce their commitment even during the dead period. I think that's uh, something that's good for people to know, and you can explain the the whole process to them a lot better. Yeah, so essentially a dead period, all that really means is that there's no visits, and I believe that with contact and how that works now, that uh, a prospect would have to contact the coaches first. So it's it's a dead period in that sense because you can't have anybody on campus. This, this upcoming like month starting today or tomorrow even, it's kind of what you see like the coaches go on vacation because, you know, they work every single day the entire year outside of this one little one little break. So this is probably where the coaches will be on vacation and kind of get to relax a little bit and kind of dive in because when they come back, that's when the team barbecue is there. I believe there's one final camp in that last week of July and that's when you also see like everybody kind of dive in because that's when you get ready for the season. So this dead period, you'll see a bunch of guys commit because that's just kind of what has happened now in July and June at the end of June. So I think that you'll see a bunch of commitments from all kinds of guys uh, from all sorts of programs going all sorts of places. But the dead period just means that there's no visits. All right. Well, let's dive into some of the specifics of this past weekend for K-State football. Lincoln Cure was obviously in town the the big notable one there is he was the the five star that uh, is from the state so you, you want to try and get that done if you can and we saw pretty much instantly uh the unique way that k-state was trying to uh stand out to lincoln cure or do something different on this visit was he went golfing with chris Kleiman, matt wells and avery johnson uh what what did you think of uh that approach by k-state over the weekend I thought it was a fun and unique aspect. I think that you really need to do something unique for prospects, especially guys like Lincoln Cure, who this was his fourth official visit already. So you need to do something different to kind of like make your visit stand out. And if you know that he likes going golfing, going to Colbert, 
having Coach Kleiman go, going with Avery, who is his host, and then Matt Wells, who is apparently a very, very good golfer, which I didn't realize until over the weekend. Uh, but you kind of do something unique to stand out. I know that uh, Rally House did the the Welcome Home Lincoln sign as well. And I think that you just kind of see things that K-State has done to really make this uh, visit unique and really kind of stand out. Because like I said, he's gone on for uh, this is his fourth official visit already. But I also think that kind of coming away from the visit, you kind of see that when there's no news, that's probably really good news for K-State again, because K-State has had the lead for a really, really long time now to the point where I think that if there was a little bit more news, I'd be a little bit more concerned, I think. Also, the Avery Johnson live with during the photo shoot was an excellent call and was pretty funny if you were in, involved in the live. There's all kinds of unhinged comments going on. Uh, but another kind of unique aspect about uh, Cure's visit was he actually did the photo shoot during the day and then came back at night. So we kind of we got to see the second one and this is just uh, my opinion, but he picked the best uniform to do the night photo shoot in. Well, and he was really committed to it, going with the uh, the ski mask there when it was obviously blazing hot out in Manhattan. And now it's night, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, but you had that. There was also a, a TikTok video of, of Avery Johnson dancing with Lincoln Cure. Uh, I think they just tried to find any possible way to uh, do something uh, differently because that, I mean, that was kind of the theme of this whole thing that had been talked about was what do you do with a guy that has obviously been to Manhattan multiple times over? How do you do things differently? And really, it, I think it just came down to more of, well, you don't have to sell him on Manhattan anymore, sell him on the relationships and the th the, the things and the people that he's going to spend the most time with when he's at K state. And that is coaches and teammates and everything else. So uh, fascinating to see, and uh, certainly no better way to uh, spend some some quality time with the K-State coaching staff than uh, on the golf course. So we'll see how the, the Lincoln Cure situation plays out. I think most people are still uh, feeling good about it. I think the only people that, that at this point in time don't think that K-State is still on track to get Cure's commitment uh, probably live in Eugene. So that would be uh, where where I think that that stands, and you, me, Dy, we all have uh, our our RPMs in for Lincoln Cure to uh, go to K State, and uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to to change. So K State seemed to do a good job, but it's recruiting. You never really know until it's actually done, and so until that happens, we'll uh, we'll all be on pins and needles. Do you have any indication on how quickly you think that this will be done? I, I think that there could be an announcement relatively soon i mean I, timing i always say is the hardest thing because you can hear one time and then another time is what is actually said i mean we've kind of seen that a few times this cycle where we've kind of thought the guys were gonna announce one day and then it ends up being another so I, i'll just say within the next few weeks is probably when the announcement comes and i think that that's kind of uh a relief for Lincoln Cure as well. I think that he is kind of just ready to be done with the recruiting process, which I don't really blame him because the recruiting process can be a lot. Yeah, no doubt about that. Okay, we we talk about the guys at K-State still in play for all that. Uh, one that they lost over the weekend was Lucas Allgaier, an offensive lineman. Uh, from St. Louis. And in addition to that, they also lost Leo Amanza, the safety that they wanted, who had St. Louis connections as well, to All Geyer and quarterback commit Dylan Duff. He chose Baylor. Uh, so what do you make on a couple of misses there for K-State where you can obviously deduct in the situation of All Geyer, like he had plenty of family ties to Iowa, so that's not the most shocking or surprising thing, but it does still sting a little bit for K-State because over the last week or two, uh, there have been a couple of guys that you thought, hey, the Cats would have really liked, and they missed out on them. Yeah, Lucas Allgaier stings, but you can probably chalk it up a little bit to just the family ties in Iowa uh, because I believe both of his uncles uh, went, or two of his uncles went to Iowa, and I believe one at least one played baseball at Iowa. So I think that you kind of saw... Yeah, he had a cousin that, that, he had a cousin yeah. that was an all-Big Ten pitcher at Iowa. Yes. 
So I think you kind of see family ties winning out a little bit there. Uh, so And then offensive line recruiting at K-State has been really, really good in the last few cycles. And it's off to a good start with Will Kimna. You would have liked Lucas Allgaier, but still in contention for Andrew Williams of Kirksville, Missouri. Still in contention for Brock Heath from Blue Valley uh, Northwest. And still in contention for Keaton Jones of Coffeyville. So still a lot, a lot of options on the offensive line. So kind of get to see where the dominoes fall now and where kind of the big pivot turns because I think that K-State's really close for all three of those guys as well. Uh, but Leo Almanza probably sings a little bit more because not only was he probably one of the top safeties on the board uh, for K-State, he was probably one of the top defensive players that was still on the board for K-State. So that kind of stings, and especially with kind of uh, a pause on Jaden Bradley's uh, recruitment. So you probably could have, you would have liked to have all three of your safeties in with a potential of uh, Dominic Mitchell, Leo Almanza, Sirius Stinyard, and Jaden Bradley. And now you're going into the first, that last weekend of July now with probably only having Dominic Mitchell. So that part stings a little bit. And with Leo Almanza, though, and I, I would even say with Lucas Algaier, I'm not sure if those recruitments are necessarily over because both programs, Kirk Ferentz, you never know what's going to end up happening there. And even Dave Miranda, to some extent, your guy, I, I think that there's kind of a wait and see on where that kind of goes as well. So I, I yeah, don't I'll, I'll just say it right now, Leo, over. we'll see in Manhattan uh <laughs> in, next year i'm not you're right about that one that one is probably far from over and uh being number two to baylor uh is not fun for people but i would say i would not count that one out because yeah dave dave <laughs> may not be around much longer uh he'll be living but he just won't be living in waco wow. texas uh if you know if i had my say in it so all yeah. right uh go ahead I was gonna say, so those ones aren't necessarily over. It, it stings in the moment, and especially Almanza, because you're probably going into that last week of July and now going into the football season trying to figure out who you want to play that free safety spot yeah. because you've lost out on your top two. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, some of the other guys that were in town this weekend uh, that – there is some interesting things going on. Another in-state guy in Keaton Jones from Coffeyville. Uh, K-State's been kind of a late riser here. Uh, what's your reaction to how things went with Keaton Jones? I think it went well with Keaton Jones. I'm really intrigued to kind of see where his recruitment goes from here because I know there's been some reservations from him about Arkansas, and it's probably uh, top two with K-State Missouri. So I'm really interested to see kind of where that goes and what a, a decision timeline for him looks like, because he's kind of a wild card in this mix where you don't really hear anything about his him and his recruitment from really anybody. And he, t he keeps it pretty tight lipped, which is kind of a refreshing thing. But like when you're on this side, you're kind of like, huh, I really wonder what what can happen with with somebody like him. But. So I think that it's probably K-State and Missouri, and I'm not really sure what a timeline looks like, but I imagine he would want to be committed by the start of a senior season. Okay. Uh, another visitor in town was Mar Monterio Elston, a running back. He seems like for a while now he's been the number one running back target for K-State. It seems like uh, even though he's from the state of Arkansas, K-State sits in a really nice spot for him. Yeah, it seems like K-State's in a really good spot for Ontario Elston. I believe that he is planning on committing to a school uh, this weekend. So I think that it's probably K-State and Arkansas. And I would really lean towards K-State because I think that he's been their number one for a while. And uh, K-State has had Ontario Elston as, as their number one for a while. So I think the mutual interest is going to end up being kind of what sells and puts K-State over the top. And K-State was the first Power 4 school to offer Monterey Wellston, so I think that they kind of have that advantage. Plus, I mean, stop me if you've heard this one, but Monterey Wellston, probably on the smaller side for a running back. What school produces the best small running backs? It seems like K-State might be the answer there. So I think that that also has kind of played a role and it has been a pretty impactful thing for Elston and his recruitment. One other player that uh, was 
in town and look he's he's one that uh the uh, our on three rpm really likes to go to oklahoma right now but k-state has wanted and and has been working on is a defensive lineman from north dakota we've talked about him before but cade peters act uh w- do you think k-state made any strides for the four-star d lineman or is this one that it was good that they got the visit it just may be too far out in front of them to try and catch some of the schools that are perceived to be leading like Oklahoma and Nebraska were. Yeah, I think that K-State has made some headway on Cade Peters Act because there was a point last week where he was probably just going to commit to Oklahoma and shut the shut his recruitment down and not even visit K-State. So I think that getting him on campus kind of shows where K-State is at and that they still have a shot. And I think that they're kind of the team that is surging a little bit. I would still probably lean towards Oklahoma if I was going to make a prediction and a call for them today. But I think that they made some headway. And I think that part of it is, again, just that he wasn't planning on visiting and was going to just shut it down and commit to Oklahoma and then ends up still making the visit. And I think that a thing that really has k or what ha- or what k has going for them with Kate Peter Zach is that there were there has been on and off times where Oklahoma and Nebraska haven't really been in a lot of contact or really kind of, I don't want to say wanted him in that sense, but like they've kind of cooled on him a little bit and K-State's been full steam ahead since last July when he was offered. So I think that they have, they have that going for them. And I think that if that, if the recruitment goes their way, I think that would play a major impact in it. All right, well, that's kind of uh, the the news and notes on recruiting right now for K-State football. Honestly, there's so much to get into with this that we'll probably do another one later in the week and uh, kind of prime what might be coming up. We know that K-State has has done a lot of work in terms of where they sit right now with their commitment total. They've already reached a number that uh, I think we were anticipating for uh, you know a little bit later on, but they're at double digits and uh, certainly a path to seeing more, like you said, Elston committing this weekend, and others may not be very far behind. So uh, we'll talk more about it throughout the week. Also have notes on K-State football and basketball coming up throughout uh, here on KSO. And if any of these guys commit to K-State, your first stop should be kstateonline.com. You can get all the insight from Drew and D.Y., and then come on over here to the KSO YouTube page and get a breakdown on commitments when they happen. So That will do it for us today. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.